Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. Kind of a different look here today. We, uh, uh, not on purpose, but it looks a little bit different, and I kind of like it a little bit. Um, the Daily Dose of Hope is a place that you can come to on a daily basis to connect directly with God, and that's what we plan to do today. And we're going to be in an Old Testament minor prophet book, which is the book of Zechariah. Now, uh, this is the second time I've preached from Zechariah uh, in all these days, and um, this one I actually learned this morning in a Bible study, and I thought it would be a great time tonight to be able to share that with you as encouragement as you as a believer or a seeker go through life. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and ask God to bless our time in his word. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a mighty, powerful God. You are a loving God. You are the one and only true God. You're sovereign, Lord. There's no other God besides you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we consider your word in Zechariah, Lord, I pray that um, we are able to concentrate fully on your word. We're able to forget about the things that uh, might be in our life today that might be a distraction, Lord. And help us to listen to your encouragement, Lord, through this prophecy that Zechariah shares with everybody, which is your words, your promises. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we pray all of this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. So again, my name is Chaplain Bob. I'm a grateful believer in uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a longtime missionary here on the field in Metro Manila, and I've uh, been to other, other countries as a missionary as well. Um, but this happens to be the place that I call home and that I love. So, let's look at Zechariah chapter 8. It's over here on the screen next to me. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. And I'm titling this, In Truth and Righteousness. So, let's take out our Bibles. If you have a paper Bible, a I uh, encourage you to take that out. If you have the old digital Bible like I have here in front of me, uh, I also encourage you to take that out and follow along. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back. And they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. Now, I think it's only appropriate for us to uh, set this up, okay? This is the eighth chapter of Zechariah. Zechariah has 14 chapters. Um, and in the first six chapters of Zechariah, uh, it's pretty much a dream. Each chapter has a different dream that Zechariah um, experiences. And by the time we get to this eighth chapter, God is now um, promising things to the people, to the people of Israel, to his chosen people. Now, you might be saying, well, Chaplain Bob, why are you sharing this with us? Because I'm not a Jew. And I'm not living in the Old Testament days. Uh, okay, fair enough. But Jesus, when he comes along in the New Testament, he says, there is no Jew, there is no Gentile, there is just one. And that's what we are. We're one in Christ. So I want to keep that in mind as we look at Zechariah chapter 8, verse 7 and 8, that this applies to us, in the year 2021, and I'll, I'll help you understand that as we go through it. Let's look at verse 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people. Now, let's stop there. When the Bible says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, and you know that this is a minor prophet, Zechariah is a minor prophet sharing this, He's been given this message from God, and he gives the credit to God. He says, thus says the Lord of hosts. He gives you, me, 
insight on the fact that he's not speaking, but God's speaking. So he says, thus says the Lord of hosts, and God goes on to say, behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. So if you're in your your living room right now, or you're in your office, or perhaps you're in a coffee shop watching this, if you look to the right and you look to the left, as far as you can look to the right and as far as you can look to the left, you see vastness. It goes on forever, right? Now, there may be a wall in your way, right? But if you look, it goes on for some time. And if you look beyond those walls, it goes on beyond that and beyond the trees and beyond anything else that might be an obstruction. So pretty much here, when God says, Behold, I will save my people from anywhere they're at. So how is this encouragement to us in 2021? Well, I was in a Bible study this morning. As you know, on Wednesdays, I have two Bible studies. And I was in a second Bible study this morning. And um, the question came up, what's the significance of East and West here? And how does it apply to us? And what we learned and what I learned and what I want to preach and share with you is that it's wherever you are in any kind of exile or trouble. You've had to leave your area. Sometimes you have to leave your area because of work. Now that's your choice. But when you've, been, when you've had freedoms taken away from you, and remember, God is a God that gives us liberty. He gives us freedom. He, he's the ultimate in giving us freedom. He gives us the freedom to choose whether to trust his son, whether to believe in his son, or to not believe in him. And so here, when it says, God promises, I will save my people from the east to the west, wherever they are, I'm going to save my people. If you're his, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're a believer in God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, you're his people. There is no Jew. There's no Gentile. You're his people. And he will save you no, where, no matter where you've been taken away to. Now, the timing is not always going to be to your liking. Sometimes God's history has to play out. And sometimes the timing is longer. Sometimes it's shorter. Sometimes it's immediate. That's not for your concern. The concern here is that God makes a promise to all of us that he will, in fact, save his people no matter where they're at. Now, keep that in mind as we go on to verse 8. In verse 8, we have some really interesting information here that will encourage you. He says, I will bring them back from wherever they're at, east or west. I'm going to bring them back and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Now, of course, Zechariah was written uh, during a time of exile. Okay? God is bringing back his people. Can God bring back his people in 2021? Yes, he can. And yes, he does. See, when God makes a promise and he says, I will bring back my people, I will bring them back and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, he says, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Now, when you apply this verse to 2021, there is, Jesus says, no Jew, no Gentile. We're one. We're one in Christ. We're one in God. Okay? Abide in him, he'll abide in you. We are one in him. Okay? So when he says, I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of whatever city it happens to be. Now, in, the, in context, we're not going to mess this up. In context, this particular um, context is that God is speaking to the people of Jerusalem, those that are in exile, and he's telling this to Zechariah so Zechariah can tell the world 
but he's going to bring back his people. I like to think of it this way for 2021. God's never going to let you be harmed. He's never going to let you be harmed. He's never going to do that harming. Now, you may, on the other hand, choose not to trust in him. You may, on the other hand, try to do things your own way. You may get wrapped up in sin. And thus you lose some of that protection and even some of that mercy that God gives. But even then, God can bring you back. So I think it's important to remember that God has the power, the sovereign power, to bring you back at any time, to relieve you. And he says, they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Think of your city. Think of your area. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. Now let's look at that. God is always the truth, and he's always righteous. He's always holy. God cannot be around people that are not righteous. By the very fact that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you say, Jesus Christ is Lord, by the very fact that you believe in him, you were made righteous by his blood. I think in the video yesterday, we were talking about some of the things that Jesus imparts to us, gives us. And one of those is that we become righteous by his blood. God can be around us. God wants to be around us. That's why God doesn't bring back everybody. He brings back only his people because his people have been washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. Not in the sinful way. And yes, your sins were forgiven at the cross, no doubt. But he washes us clean. We become holy in the eyes of God. And God says, I'm going to do this in truth and righteousness. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. God proves it to us here in verse 8 that he wants us. He wants to be around us. He wants to protect us. He wants to shelter us when we need to be sheltered. And he will bring you back from whatever it is. Now, some you might be asking, where could I go? What could be happening? Well, who knows? Maybe you're in a country where you have been exiled or you've been imprisoned because of your, maybe because of your faith. Perhaps you're now in a situation where sin has overcome you. And you're trying to figure a way out. God will bring you back. Maybe you're in a bad relationship and you don't know how to turn it around. God will bring you back. See, God says, I'm going to do this in truth and righteousness. And that's the type of God that we serve. Now, let's finish with this. This is the Old Testament. This is the part of the Bible that many people say, well, I don't want to read it because it's something that happened before and it doesn't really make sense for my life today. Okay, fair enough. Um, but I would say that if you look at tonight's sermon, you can see that even though God is prophesying to Zechariah for the Jews, you can see definitely how this can be of encouragement to you. And if you didn't know these verses before tonight, you can see how the Old Testament can be completely encouraging to you. So this is why I'm encouraging you the last few days is to get into the Word no matter what. It doesn't matter whether you get into the New Testament or the Old Testament, get into the Word. But if you're not in the Old Testament, if it's some, the Old Testament seems like it, it, um, you're allergic to it, <laughs> Uh, don't worry. Uh, I've been there before myself. I didn't read much of the Old Testament for many, many years. But I can say recently what I'm learning, and I'm, right now I'm going through a Bible study going through all the minor prophets. There's 13 minor prophets. And I am enjoying spending time in the Old Testament because what I'm learning is what somebody taught me a long time ago. 
The Old Testament, the more I read the Old Testament, the more I read the New Testament, the more the Bible gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So instead of being this thick book of 66 books, it feels like it's getting down to one big book. And that's, that's the truth. That's my truth, not God's truth. That's my truth. And I believe that, that that's the way that we can actually fundamentally understand God's word is by reading the whole word. All right, let's bow our heads and we'll ask God to bless our time after this video. Dear Lord, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a mighty and powerful God. Thank you for being truth. Thank you for being righteous. Thank you for being sovereign. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us. We love you. We pray all this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. Okay, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you coming to the Daily Dose of Hope on a daily basis. Don't forget to look down here. Share this information. Uh, down here below me is the Rumble channel, the YouTube channel, and also our Facebook page. Share, share, share this video with other people. And don't forget to go to our Rumble channel and subscribe. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And please go to Facebook and like us on Facebook so as many people can see this video and other videos anytime they want. All right, everybody. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Here's a little bit of Skyly Shea. We're going to leave you with some shelter from the storm. When life keeps falling and wonder where he is in all this mess, he's right there to guide you, unseen you're not.